Hey there, Norman here from WoCode, and today we're going to be discussing the Social Icons Custom Widget. Now, we created this widget as an alternative to the standard Social Icons widget. One issue that the standard widget had is that all the icons were pre-selected and it doesn't always contain the icons that you'll need. Now we've gotten a lot of requests to add specific icons for unique platforms or services and it can be pretty challenging to have a curated collection of icons that work for everyone's needs. So the difference with this widget is that it's fully customizable. You can use pretty much any icon in existence. It supports massive icon libraries such as Font Awesome, Line Awesome, Drip Icons, and Material Designs. Now, this widget is not quite as simple as the Social Icons widget, but it's essential if there's an icon you need that's not in that widget and it's still pretty easy to use. So let's go ahead and jump into the builder here and take a look at how this widget is set up. Over in the builder, we can see here that we're using the pet store template. Now, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we can see that we have the social icon widget. Now, this is the current default social icon widget, but let's say we wanted to add a Tumblr, for example. We can see here that it's not available in the current icon package. So let's go ahead and close this widget. Let's go ahead and delete that widget. Let's open up the widgets panel and let's go ahead and grab that new custom icon widget. Let's go ahead and grab the widget and let's drop that down into our footer here. I'm gonna close this and just quickly realign this so that it is in line with the other elements in the footer. Now you'll see by default we have one icon visible and that's gonna be the Facebook icon. So we're going to go ahead and open this panel up and we can see that we have quite a number of options and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. The first option is going to be the unique ID option. Now this is going to be necessary if you have more than one social icon custom widgets on a page. For this example, we only have the one in the footer, so we're going to leave that blank. Next, we can see our various icon libraries we have access to. And now it's likely you'll only need to use one library like Font Awesome, but you can use as many as you'd like or mix and match as you need. For this tutorial, uh, we're going to end up using one of each. So we're just going to go down the list and enable all of these. And as we enable them, we'll see that we have a blue hyperlink available, which will take us directly to those libraries. And then above that, we have an example of the class and how it needs to be entered within the widget. This is important, and if you have any trouble getting an icon to display, just refer to these examples. Now, just below the icon libraries, we see that we can add individual icons using list items. We currently have one in here by default, which is that Facebook icon. We're gonna go ahead and remove that, and we're gonna add a new icon by selecting Add Item we're going to open that item up, scroll to the top. We're going to add a button link. We're going to set this to facebook.com. And now for the icon class, this is where we need to jump to the icon library and grab the class for our icon. So we'll head over to the font awesome in the icon library and locate the hyperlink. We're going to go ahead and click that hyperlink and it's going to open font awesome in a new tab. From here, we can just search for Facebook and select an icon. And now that we're on the icons page, from here, we can go ahead and select copy HTML. Now with that HTML copied, we can jump back into the builder. And in the icon class section, we can paste that HTML. Now it gives us some extra string of information here. But if we take a look at the class example for Font Awesome, we can see that we only need the FAS F A dash and the icon name. So we can go ahead and remove all this excess. And now if we move this out of the way, we can see here that we have our new updated Facebook icon. Let's take a look at the rest of the options here. We have a button label. You can enter a label and it'll display on the right hand side of the icon, or you can leave a blank. For this example, we're gonna leave that blank. Let's jump down to the button target. This allows you to select whether or not clicking that button will open the link in the same tab or a new tab. And last but not least down here, you can see we have an icon color option. This is not the standard color picker you see in other widgets. With this color picker, you will need to enter the hex, RGB, or RGBA value manually. 
This works a little differently from other widgets because of the fact that we're working with icons that are from libraries rather than a collection that are already chosen for the widget, much like the standard social icon widget already has the icons chosen. One thing to keep in mind with this icon color field is that it is per icon. Later in the design section, you'll see that there's a standard color picker which will apply to all icons, but you could think of this color picker in the list item area as an individual override for colors. The easiest thing to do is select the color once for all the icons. So we'll do that once we've added all the icons that we're gonna use. With that being said, that's it for the first icon. Let's go ahead and set up the others. Next, we'll set up a Tumblr icon using Line Awesome. So let's go ahead and click the Add Item. Let's open up List Items. And then let's come up to Line Awesome and open up their library. And from here, we can go ahead and scroll down. We can locate Search Icon. And then now we can type in Tumblr grab one of the icons they offer and down here we'll find the html we can go ahead and click copy html jump back into the widget paste that into the icon class and then just like with the font awesome icon we have some extra html tidbits here that we want to go ahead and get rid of now you may notice that this class has lab as the prefix while the example has las in most cases, it'll be LAB or LAS, and in some cases, if you're a pro member for Font Awesome or Line Awesome, there are additional prefixes. However, the same procedure will still apply. If we jump back over here, we can set the button link to go to tumblr.com. We're gonna go ahead and leave the button label blank again, and we won't worry about the button target. And we'll leave the icon color blank as well. Now, if we take a look at the icons themselves, in this particular case, we can see that the Tumblr icon is a little smaller than the Facebook one. And that's just because we're using different libraries for these two icons. Now, ideally, you'll use the same library for all your icons to have the best consistency in size. So next, we're gonna wanna head and add our Instagram widget. So we'll click the add item. And then from here, we wanna use the material design icons for the Instagram icon. So let's go ahead and click the hyperlink for that. This will bring up the material design icon. And then we're gonna use the search bar and we're gonna search Instagram. And then if we come down here and we locate the icon, we wanna take note of the name here. So that is Instagram. Right, okay, so now let's jump back into the builder here. Let's come up here and then let's take a look at the class example. It's gonna be MDI MDI dash icon name. So in this example, we're gonna replace heart with Instagram. And now we can see here down at the bottom that icon is populated. Moving back down, we got our button label. We're gonna leave blank. We're not gonna mess with button target. We're not gonna mess with the icon color. Let's add our final icon. So for this one, we're gonna use our drip icons option and we're going to open that hyperlink. And on drip icons, we wanna locate a email icon. For drip icons, we also don't have a search field. So it functions a little bit differently. So we'll just need to look at the icons. Now there are two big groups of icons. They're totally identical, but you can utilize them in different ways. What we need is the CSS mapping section down here. We'll ignore the upper character mapping group. And in this section, we'll just look for a male icon. Let's go ahead and find, it should be al alphabetized. So we can come down to the M's. Let's find the M's. Uh, map male. Here's the one that we're looking for right here. So like in the last example, instead of copying code, we'll just make a note of the icon name, which is male, all lowercase. So let's jump back into the builder here. Let's scroll back up. Let's take a look at the icon class example for drip icons. It's gonna be drip icons dash icon name. So in this example, we're gonna replace heart with male. And as we can see, that icon is now down here on the bottom with the rest of the icons. We can go ahead and go back in here, skip the button label, skip the button target, skip the icon color, and then that'll do it.
We've added all four icons from each icon library, all within the same widget. There is actually one last thing I need to do. Since this is a link to an email, I want to put in our mail to link. Wonderful. So as usual, there are tons of settings in the design section that allow you to choose customizing colors and fonts and sizes, etc, etc. And I won't go through them all because they're all self explanatory and they're all labeled with their exact function. But there are a few settings I did want to comment on. The first thing is the icon layout option. Now this is the first setting you'll see in the design section and this allows you to choose a horizontal or vertical layout for the icons. Now the next thing is we're going to jump down into the icon styling and here we have the icon right margin. Now this setting is intended to provide some additional space and controls for the cases when you're using text labels with the icons. If you're not using text labels, this should be left at zero. Now if we jump down here into the icon colors, I mentioned this setting briefly earlier. There's a color setting in the content section for each icon. And then there's this icon color in the icon styling section. This is the global setting and will apply to all icons. While we're here, we'll go ahead and set this to white to match the footer text. This is going to be the best way to apply color to every icon unless you want to apply colors to them individually. That's going to do it for our social icon custom widget. And until next time, my name is Norman Durkee and you're rocking with the best website builder platform on the planet, wocode.com. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team. We're always here to help.